Welcome to a brand new LangGraph 100 series. Yes, in this series, we will talk about LangGraph, not agents. My agent series got some popularity, but the question is, if we don't have a clear grasp on LangGraph, we can simply kiss our agents goodbye, because this is the basis of all agentic orchestrations that we're going to be building, and that's why a lot of you have asked me to make a series strictly on LangGraph. This is where we can learn about LangGraph end-to-end, step-by-step. And by end-to-end, -end, I mean from planning, to coding, to testing, to deployment. And then building a front-end to perform a QA-based chat with our own graph. And here is the plan for the whole series. Session 101, which is this video. This is where we will learn the basics of a graph, add conversational memory, and have a chat. Session 102, that's where we will extend our graph with a tool node and a conditional edge and chat with it to test the usage of the tool. Session 103, this is where we will test our graph against multiple different AI models. Session 104, this is where we will Take what we built and test it on Google Colab and turn that into a real Python runnable app and test it on desktop. Session 105. At this point, we will spin up a LangServe server and use our Python runnable graph to create an API endpoint and test that with Postman. Session 106. Now that we have an API for our graph, we will build a chatbot front end. I'm calling it a graph bot and connect to your LangServe backend and start chatting. Session 107. At this point, we will take our LangServe graph and deploy that into a remote digital ocean droplet using Docker and test that remote API endpoint with Postman. Session 108. Now, this one I'm not too sure about. I will do this only if I get enough requests. And this will be to create a GraphBot front end with Next.js 15 and connect to our remote LangServe based Graph API. At this point, it will look like pure production. But the key to it, all of this, is that we will not add any extra complexity to our basic graph so that we can focus strictly on learning LangGraph end to end. All that said, Let's start our journey with LangGraph 101. All right, so let's get started here with the installation. I'm bringing in LangChain, LangChain Community, and LangGraph. And uh, here I'm bringing in a whole bunch of LangChain model functions so that I can use them interchangeably. And uh, here I'm showing the current LangChain and LangGraph version. As you can see here, uh, the LangChain is 0.3.14 and Lang graph would be 0.2.61. All right, so next, this is how I'm loading my API keys for all the models. And this part right here is our connection to LangSmith, which is this guy right here. As soon as we invoke our first model from here, you will see that our project name showing up is LangGraph Tutorial 100C. And that said, let's look at our LangChain chain invocation. All right, so uh, by now, uh, you guys are probably wondering why LangChain. Uh, the reason being, a lot of you have asked me to compare the LangChain and LangGraph side by side. So I brought in this structure. Trust me, we're not going to spend too much time here. I just wanted to show you that we can easily create the whole bunch of uh, runnable lambdas, like uh, creating the model, uh, a prompt template. These are all runnable lambdas then we can bring them up using pipe as separators and create a runnable sequence which is called chain and then we can go ahead and invoke that chain with our prompt or human message and get the result and print it out let's run it boom there you go we got the answer and uh, now you can see we can easily put this guy in a loop and create a chatbot out of it right and how simple the whole process is. That's why LangChain is great for creating simpler, uh, smaller tools uh, or applications, and they are reliable also. But I'm going to try to simulate this 
simple process with land graph and you will see how complicated that can get and the reason being land graph is designed for agent or orchestration where we can uh, put together a whole bunch of nodes and have them uh, talking to each other working together etc which is not possible with langchain that's why langchain is simple and strong for smaller stuff or and for agentic orchestration we are going to need LangGraph. So now let's go try to simulate this simple process with LangGraph next. All right, finally, let's get started with LangGraph 101, the basics. And these are the steps we're gonna follow. Let me uh, just go over them quickly. Step one, loading the imports. Step two, initiate the graph. Step three, building the LLM. Step four, creating and adding the main or the single node to the graph and that's you know we're going to keep it simple we're going to add only a single node and then we're going to compile the graph that's it these are the five main steps to any land graph project when you begin that said at this point we're going to go ahead and chat with the graph but this time we will have no memory to it so we're going to test it out too next we're going to go ahead go to this Step number six, where we're going to add the conversational memory to the graph and recompile it. And last but not least, we're going to test the graph by chatting with it, which includes the conversational memory. Now let's get started. All right, so this is the imports we were talking about, all the necessary libraries. For example, uh, the state graph from LangGraph. And this is something that we use to initiate our graph. And this is the one holds the entire structure of our graph. And then we bring in these two functions, annotated and typed it from the Python typing library, because these are the ones that we are using here. Type dict is basically the type dictionary. It actually defines the structure of the state, which has a variable called messages. And we annotate that by saying, oh, the structure of this message will be a list or an array. You're coming from JavaScript, and then we invoke this function called add messages coming from LangGraph, and this actually goes ahead and adds the necessary messages to this variable which builds the state. As an example, we can bring in this here. This is our state, and the type dict and annotated are giving it this structure, and this add messages is responsible for making sure that. It makes sure that when the user message comes in, it goes in exactly like this as the tuple, which has user and message combo, and the and reply from the AI has this structure, an assistant and a message, and that's what's happening right here when we initiate our graph using by invoking this state graph class and the data structure. We pass as state and thus instantiate our graph object. Let's go build the LLM next. All right, so now that we have uh, our graph, it is so we're going to go ahead and run this. And now let's build our LLM, bringing in chat OpenAI from Langchain OpenAI. And uh, here we had two choices O1 Preview versus O1 Mini. I chose O1 Mini. They're the, pretty much the same thing, only difference is. O1 Mini is much faster than Preview. So that's what I'm going to use. So let's run this. All right. Now we have our model built up. Now next uh, step, step number four, we're going to go ahead and create and add our single node to the graph. And this is how we do it. The function called prompt node. We're sending our state here and we are returning this message object by appending llm.invoke. And within that, as an, as an argument, we're sending state messages. So whatever message we get, we're sending it through while invoking that LLM and then returning that in this structure that we just created above message. And now we're going to add this node to the graph using graph.add node. And here, give it a name, prompt node. And this is the function which we just created here. This function will create the node and add it to the graph. That being done, we go to the next step. 
here before compiling we just define a starting point and an ending point since our prompt node is the only node so it is both our starting point and ending point and at this point we're going to go ahead and use this name right here prompt node as the starting point and the ending point with that we go ahead and do a graph.compile to create our graph so let me see let's run this all right and now let's invoke that and boom there you go our graph just got created this start and end point these are basically the messages that denote a start and end point for the graph but this one the prompt node is the single node that we have in our graph with that let's move to the next one where we got we're going to go ahead and create a while true loop so that we can have a conversation going right and at the beginning we're going to just go ahead and take our graph and use the dot invoke where we're going to go ahead and send this message here we're going to have a user and user input and this user input is coming from right here so it's going to just ask us for an input and whatever we put in there is going to go into this message as user input and then whatever reply we get from the ai is going to come back as a result and from this structure we're going to get the last message and this is how we get the last message result messages minus one dot content so that's going to give us the last message or the reply and we're going to go ahead and display a line underneath it to differentiate between the messages so that being done let's go ahead and run this and just to show you this is the graph we're going to go ahead and invoke at this point we don't have any memory attached to it so let's see what it does all right so let's say hi i am moose from atlanta enter all right so it replies hi moose whatever whatever so now i'm gonna say tell me about my city I just said I'm from Atlanta, but it does not know what city I'm talking about because it has no memory. So we're just going to go ahead and say bye and get out of it. And we did. So at least now we saw that our graph is working. So while we're at it, I'm just going to go ahead and dis, you know, go ahead and disable this part for a little bit and enable this part just to show you that there are two ways we can go ahead and talk to our graph these graphs are basically uh, runnable, runnable sequences as we saw in the lang chain chain so just like the other one we can either invoke it or do a dot stream and the difference between the dot stream and invoke is the dot stream go has, goes ahead and gives us the answers step by step so that's why we have to grab a you know whatever event that is an event dot values and we're going to loop through it and then show that message step by step even though in here in uh, google colab you're not gonna see much of a difference but i just wanted to show it so that for the future purpose when we create an api endpoint or whatnot we can actually use this to make nice chatbot outputs which actually shows you the streaming uh, text output uh, on the surface right so let's uh, try this. So let's run this one. All right. So give it. Let's ask it a larger question. Okay. Write me a write me a song about the USA. Right. Supposed to give us step by step, and it did, but uh, it went through too quick. But then again, you see the point. Let's say bye and get out of it. All right. So at this point, we saw the output being done different ways but we also saw that uh, without memory it cannot continue a viable conversation right so next step would be to add memory to add memory we have to install this library langgraph checkpoint sqlite so let's run that all right so now that we have our library and as you saw the squiggly line went away so now we're going to go ahead and bring in SQLite saver and memory saver and using those two functions like this we're going to go ahead and recompile the graph but here's something significant to notice 
if I try to run it, it's not going to work. Any other sequence, if you run it in between, it's not going to work because since this is a one single graph, we need to rerun everything, every step. Go all the way from right here. Otherwise, it's going to fail. I mean, let me just show you. Uh, let's go ahead and run this. And boom, it breaks. Now, it sees something has already been compiled before. So, that's why what we're going to have to do, disable this. Now, under normal lang chain, this never happens. We can just uh, start from any block and redo them. But lang graph is everything attached to this one structure you first create. So we have to start from here, rerun this fresh. Now we create the model again. Now we go ahead and add the node. And this time we're going to add the starting point and ending point. But we're not going to compile just yet. Right here, after building the memory, now we're going to go ahead and recompile it. Fresh. And this is our graph. And this time, we're going to go ahead and have the same looping chatbot here. But only difference is this time we have to bring in one extra variable called config, which has attributes like configurable thread ID 1. Because this is how this um, SQLite memory keeps track of the sessions, right? So this is thread level 1 is the session number one and that's how it's going to maintain the memory right so the rest is exactly the same we're just uh, doing a graph dot invoke and a message but right here we're sending this config equals config and that's what's going to help us maintain the memory of the graph the rest is the same distant response minus one dot content this will show us the last message so let me run this again. Hi, I am Moose from Atlanta. All right. Now I'm going to say, tell me about my city. Okay, not which city I did not mention. So let's see what it does. Once again, O1 models are slow. All right. So look at this. Pretty much wrote a book on Atlanta, Georgia. That's what I mentioned. And that clearly shows us that now our graph has memory. So I'm just not going to continue much. I'm just by. Also, let me just ask, what is my name? Just to make sure. Mention that your name is Moon. <laughs> so great. So now we have a chatbot with memory using LangGraph. Let's say buy, get out. And now this is all said and done. Let's go check out our LangSmith portal. There you go. This is actually holding our entire conversation and just pick out any which one and go to the details. And that tells us all sorts of info, how many tokens, the cost, the time, everything. The metadata tag, I don't know what that is, but if there is an error, it's just going to show right there. This is an incredible tool. Now I got to say, while you're using Langchain, you might be able to get away with not using this tool, but when you're using LangGraph, you better get used to it because things are going to get very, very complex. With that, we just finished our first video, LangGraph 101 Graph Basics. This guy is done. Next, we're going to extend our graph with tool nodes and conditional edge. See you next time. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.